In this video, we will consider compression so that we understand about reversible and irreversible cycles. It means adding mass and getting the system back to state 1. In other words, work is done on the system. Let's start with the reversible compression process. Imagine adding the mass stone by stone to achieve the state 1. The work done in each step will be these areas. When the size of the masses approach 0, work done is eventually the area under this curve. The area is equal to that in the reversible expansion but negative. The negative symbol is also to represent that it is work done on the system. In the forward and backward processes, that is the expansion and compression, the magnitude of the work done is the same and the signs are opposite. So if the compression is done in a reversible manner, following the same path, then the total work done in the entire cycle of expansion and compression is zero. Let's see the irreversible compression. Keep the chunk of the mass back on the piston. State 1 is reached. This is not entirely true which you will realize after watching the video on adiabatic processes. For simplicity, let's say it reaches state 1. This is the path. Work done on the gas is equal to a much bigger area, meaning work done is higher than that in the reversible case. Note that it is work done on the gas. What it means is that we have to spend more work to compress the gas in the irreversible case compared to the reversible case. When it comes to work done by the gas, we know that it is maximum in the reversible case as we have seen in the previous video. The forward and backward work are not equal in irreversible case. Of course, we could not follow the same path to return as we simply reverse the process of keeping the mass back. That's how the irreversible process works. Fine, what happens to the surrounding? That is the most important question. That's what we will see in the next video. Without considering what happens to the surrounding, we cannot say whether a process is fully reversible or not. Fine. Before closing, let's see two small concepts which should have been part of the previous video itself. But you know, it was already too long. The first one is a glimpse of a reversible and irreversible heat transfer. Consider a gas system. It is at 20 degrees Celsius. Now the process is to transfer heat to it. Instead of seeing this red arrows like fire, let's have a heat reservoir. It is the surrounding. If its temperature is also 20 degrees Celsius, then will there be heat transfer? No, these two bodies are in thermal equilibrium. To put it simply, nothing happens. This is the true reversible heat transfer. Now consider the reservoir at 30 degrees Celsius. Then the temperature difference between the system and the surrounding is finite. If it is 21 degrees Celsius, then also it is finite. In both the cases, heat will flow from the reservoir to the system in an irreversible manner. One thing we can sense here is that the one in the right is closer to a reversible case. If we go further, we can have this kind of scenario where the temperature difference is vanishingly small and not a finite one. Now heat transfer would take place. This is the practical means of doing a reversible heat transfer. Fine. The second small concept is about the friction, which may be intuitively obvious. We have seen the possibilities of what happens when there is no friction. If there is friction, then there will be heat generation. This is important to keep in mind. See you in the next video.